My name is Festus Babatunde Taiwo. From the Throne of Grace Model Parish Church, Ayonio, along uh, situated at number 30 Mufutao Adeyemi Street, um, by Oriloque bus stop of Egbeda Idimu. So it's Oriloque bus stop. It's uh, beside Almoru. So when you are coming either towards Iyanapaja Egbeda, you are coming from um, Ikotun. Just tell the driver that you want to get down at Almoru filling station bus stop. When you get down at Almoru bus stop, um, or a local bus stop that's Almoru filling station. When you get down there, you will see the street beside Almoru that is at the Yemi Street. So you can um, just walking down the street, you will see number 10. So we are situated at number 30 Mufu Street at um, Egbeda, there in Lagos State. Yeah, so and uh, God bless you as you listen, as you watch this program. We have started since Sunday and we have been talking so much about the journey to the cross today is the day four that jesus christ embarked on the journey to the cross and then we are looking at the five days of his journey to the cross what and what did he do you know jesus christ walked in these four in these five days as never before he walked tirelessly and then we started on sunday uh, when he entered into jerusalem with um, all fanfare you know with all joy and the whole world went after him they welcomed him they they were happy to see him and they were singing and chanting Hosanna to Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and the Hebrew word for it is uh, Adonai is a um, I, I told you that it is called the thank you you are watching thank you for watching so it is called it is called um Beshev Adonai. That is the word I titled it uh, on Sunday. The Beshev Adonai. Uh Beshem Adonai. That is um Adonai means the Lord. So Beshem Adonai. So and then on Sunday as well, towards evening, we saw that he was teaching in the Jerusalem, in the temple that uh, he, uh, on Monday, I mean, on Monday, when he came back to Jerusalem, he drove away those that were buying and selling, and then he started teaching. He taught so much, and then he went again, he went away to Bethany to go and rest. On, Mon on Tuesday, he came back, he was teaching. He started his teaching from the spot where the, um, the fig tree got dried up after he caused the victory uh, on um, on monday so this continued like that so the teaching continued he taught them two things on this top it on the spot of that uh, incident number one he taught them faith how they can the faith resolute faith in the lord how you have to how you need to have faith without part without you know um compromise Number two, forgiveness. He taught his disciples forgiveness that you need to forgive. When you forgive others, then your Lord will forgive you. So we need to forgive. And I told us that we need to forgive. At least the best, the 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 most um, the most um, terrible sin that a man will have, uh, that a man that you can commit against your spouse, against your husband, is to have a man sleeping you no know, a man you, you i just coming now and then i see a, another man on my or my wife that'd be a terrible sin but yet we need to forgive you know we need to forgive yeah some might be saying that it is easier said than done well when you have the holy spirit the holy spirit will give you the enablement the empowerment to to do that so when you have the holy spirit the uh, and, and i thought i taught you like yesterday as well that there are so many of us that we have Holy Spirit. It is Holy Spirit. Uh, there are some of us that have a lot of that doesn't have Holy Spirit. They only have um, um, what we call it gift, the gift. And some were asking me that how uh, that uh, how do I mean? You know, I said that if you have gift, you can have gift of the Holy Spirit without having Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is very possible. 
You can have gift of the Holy Spirit without having interaction with the Holy Spirit, without having relationship with the giver. Um, by the grace of God on Saturday, I'm going to teach holy on Holy Spirit. By the I'm going to talk fully spirit. You know, Holy Spirit is a is a is, is a promise. It's a promise. You pray for you don't ask for Holy Spirit, you don't pray for it. No, you don't pray for it on his own and by Jesus Christ. He said that if I do not go, he will not. So when he now goes, so it, it, the Holy Spirit came. So the Holy Spirit is an entity on a person on its own. So you may not have relationship with Holy Spirit, but the of the Holy Spirit as nowadays um, this lockdown period, you know, so many people are enjoying the gift from people, from philanthropists. They were giving Gift. The churches are sharing gifts, and I want to say thank you to all the churches that are sharing gifts that are rising up to the help of the members. And they are sharing gifts, they buy rice and give to people. And yet, these people, they don't have relationship with us, they don't have any, they are nothing to us, but we just give them the gift. Like most of us, we used to give the beggars money. And, and food as well. Please, the gift you are giving to the beggars, those beggars, are they your family? Are they your parents? Or are they? They are nothing to you. So we are just giving the gift in the name of giving. But they don't have a relationship with us. The same thing, where the gift of the gift having relationship with Holy Spirit. They don't have rapport with Holy Spirit. They don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. They don't even have relationship with, with, with Jesus, the Spirit. They don't have. So they don't have relationship with Him. So they are just enjoying the gift. So and then at the end of the day, they are going to be losers because they had the opportunity of looking for the owner of the relationship with don't do that. They are they are busy enjoying the gift. That is why you see them because they don't if they fumble with it. You see them with the with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ against the norms, against the tradition that Jesus and they, they don't bear fruit. Kill. They can fornicate. They can a lot of atrocities when they. Have and they'll be thinking in them that ah, if, 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 if what I'm doing is wrong, they have forgotten that after 10 years from so he was still be, he was still using the deposit. So and Bible said that he thought still there. So he wanted to as he normally does. So he was, he, he, he forgot that he has been emptied. So may you not be emptied in the name of Jesus. So I will talk so much on on Saturday. Uh, that is um, the Black Saturday. Silent period. And that was the time when Jesus was working, was working in the heads, heads in the hell. That is uh, the belly of the hell was trying to liberate the souls that are imprisoned there, like the saints that are when they die there, but Satan has held them bound to go there and then liberate them. So we are scripture, not God bless you. So today we want to look at you know we, we have we have gone through the widow's offering, we have gone through the Greatest commandment when they, they ask him who which commandment we knew that Jesus Christ answered them as well. When and the chief priest gave you authority to do all these things you are doing, and then we saw that Jesus Christ answered them as well. And then you know, Jesus is a person that you cannot, um, you, you cannot um, with any question, so he has an answer. So he asked them back that before I tell you by whose authority I'm doing this, authority is John the Baptist doing the baptism. The baptism of John the Baptist is 
from men and they were unable to answer they said neither will i tell you my answer as well so that's a very wonderful um, answer there then we we saw that in chapter um 30, we saw that he prophesied in mark mark chapter 13 he prophesied about the desolation that will be coming upon jerusalem and upon the old so we saw that and which eventually happened 70 years after the coming of the son of man the, that was yesterday as well on, 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 on Tuesday and on Wednesday was a silent time that he kept quiet for retreats then he was gathering for the assault that he wanted to unleash on the uh, on the um, on Satan so chapter 14 we started from mark 11 today we are in mark chapter 14 the incident that happens to mark chapter 14 someone asked me why do i love mark so much yeah mark was the earliest gospel he was the first gospel he was the earliest that wrote the gospel a small boy when jesus christ tomorrow we are going to see mark so when jesus christ was arrested he was that small boy that had been following jesus christ closely he was watching all the Event. So he had his paper and and then was writing down all the events one by one. He was a small boy. So on that morning when Jesus Christ was arrested, he was there. And then when they wanted to arrest him, when they wanted to catch him, he was there, that small boy that wrapped himself with a wrapper, with a linen. So he just wrapped himself. He did not even bathe. He sneaked out of his mother's house and then he went to watch the incident. And then when they wanted to grab him, his clothing, his material. So when they grabbed the clothes, he ran away naked. That was what the Bible says. We are going to see that tomorrow, Friday. So he was the earliest gospel um, writer. He was the earliest writer. The gospel of Mark. Gospel. In the see that those of you you will know that he was the earliest and other gospel uh, writers they copied from the materials from him because he has the authentic and then the direct um as well most of the the book of mark and uh, the book of uh, matthew and the luke were also found in the book of mark mark was the so but today we are not talking about the synoptic gospel so we, 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 we won't go deeper more than that so and then chapter 14 mark 14 verse 1 says after two days passover and of unleaving priest and the scribes sought out they might take him by craft and that they said not on the there be uproar of the people. So two days. There are two days coming Tuesday. So there are two. Days. Then the two days. In two days time, there there will be Passover. There will be celebration of the feast. So the feast, the first day of Passover will be on Thursday. So in two days time, that is on Tuesday, they were saying in two days time. So the two days time now. So. They were looking for a way to arrest him. If we read further, we will see where Judas agreed to betray him. And I showed you that last week. Uh, that on Tuesday, Judas agreed to betray Jesus. So, at verse 10, Mark 14, 10. And Judas, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they had it, they were glad and promised money. And he sought out he might conveniently betray him. Look how he will conveniently betray him. So he was he, he was after money. So any minister of God that is after money, we always do things contrary to the destroying his own future, his own life. So you love money too much. All the things you are preaching is money, 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 money. Oh, oh, he, no, shani. Uh, money, he, he, uh, all your sermon on Sunday is money. Breakthrough, no repentance, no, no, um, no sanctification preaching, no justification, no redemption 
teaching. So you are not teaching the word of God. You are not balanced. You know, when your congregation is feeding on rice, 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 rice alone, they will have kwachoko. So most churches are having kwachoko today because they are not feeding on a balanced diet. And any church, any minister of God that is not feeding his congregation with a balanced diet, the church will suffer kwachoko. So, so many churches are suffering kwachoko. So many churches are terrible. So many churches are not balanced in doctrine so but we pray that god the, the that, that jesus the owner of the church the chief shepherd will come quickly and put things right in the name of jesus so then um after that verse 12 that is where we want to start today's teaching verse 12 and the first day of unleavened bread when they killed passover his disciples said unto him where will thou will thou that we go and prepare thou that that thou mayest eat the passover so that is where do you want us to go and prepare so that you will eat passover you know don't forget that the religion that jesus christ was born into was judaism and he obeyed some he obeyed their tradition as well so especially the tradition that were not against the word of god so in that verse um, verse 12 now on the first day of unleaving unleaving the unleaving bread i'm going to talk about unleaving bread on the first day of the unleaving bread i'm in verse 12 i'm reading new king james version when they killed the passover lamb his disciples said unto him where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover. So they themselves, they want to observe the Passover in the evening. Today is the first day of the Passover. Tomorrow is the real Passover. So in Israel today, they are observing. Today they are going to kill animals. Today they are going to celebrate over. Passover starts today from evening. And we end on this on Saturday evening. So they, they, they have three days like that to celebrate their Passover. Go to the history of the Israelites, the Jewish history. They will tell you the same thing I'm telling you, that every year they start on Thursday evening and then they end it on Saturday evening. Then why do they end it on Saturday evening? Because Saturday used to be a Sabbath day. So their Sabbath day ends in the evening. Their Sabbath day commences from Friday evening as well. So this Passover starts on Thursday evening. So the disciples were asking Jesus, Sir, where would you want to eat the Passover so that we can put the place in order, set the tables, and then put the wine and bread there? He told them, he sent out two of his disciples. Look at that, two again. Don't forget, on Sunday, he sent out two to go and bring the cult, the cult, the baby, baby donkey, the house. So he, told, he sent two. Now again, he sent another two. So Jesus understood the power of two. So instead of one. So don't forget that the calling that Christ has called you, you are not the only one he called. There are someone else who will be doing the same thing you are doing, who will be doing it right when you are doing it wrong. So don't forget, you are not the only one. You are not the only one. So he didn't call you alone. He called other people as well. So he said unto them, and meet will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. That was a you enter into the city, someone will be carrying um, a, a bath, a bath of water, or a pail of water, a pitcher of water. So the man has gone to fetch water from the stream, then he will be coming. So as you are entering the city, the, the, the town, the, you will meet the man. Follow him follow him when wherever he goes in of the house the teacher says where is the guest room in which i may eat the passover with my disciples look at that that's another one another wonderful wonderful thing so the man anywhere the man that carries the water enters dear you to enter so jesus did not send them to that man no that man was just a map was just their Google. Their Google. When they entered into the city, 
You see the man that carries the water. Don't talk to him. Don't ask him any question. Anywhere he enters, to enter. Then when you enter the place, ask for the owner, ask for the master of the house. So, and they did exactly as he has told them. Then he will show you a large room, upper room, furnished and prepared. Then make ready for us. Look at that. So, which means Jesus had a pre-arrangement with the owner of the house. He knew the owner of the house very well. So, he knew whom the owner of the house was. So, they might possibly be family or friends. So, he, knew, he, he must have talked to him. He must have told him that, look, I want to take, I want to eat Passover in your house. Possibly, it could be the Lazarus, only God knows. It could be the house, but Lazarus was not living in Jerusalem anyway. It could be the house of um, Nicodemus, only God knows. Possibly it could be the house of Zacchaeus, you know, uh, only God knows. It could be the house of Matthew, only God knows. But he said that go to that house, ask for the master of the house. That room. That means they had or they had or they had original plan. They had prepared that. Going to use your household so prepare a large room for me and then just go and ask him that where is that large room uh, they, they had um, what we call it um, um pre arrangement before so before someone can just come and say yes where is that shoe so which shoe now he said that yes where is that room master says which man so many teachers in the land of israel in jerusalem there are so many teachers nicodemus was was a teacher as well gamaliel was a teacher and we have so many like that that were teachers so many teachers so but because the he, jesus and that man had um relation um, agreement they had rapport they had um you know they had interconnectivity so they are friends they have rapport they have relationship so he asked him that i will be coming so i'll be sending my servant two of my disciples to you then show them the place so that they can decorate the place they can do the place so who said that so his disciple went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them look at that is Jesus. That's great Jesus. That's great Jesus. So in the evening, he came with himself. So today is Thursday. We call it Monday Thursday. We call it, the Catholic call it Monday Thursday. It's a holy Thursday because it's a day that Jesus Christ had relationship, had ritual essence with his disciple. So and then when he got there, so he, they, they went there to communion is not taken in the morning. sorry, last supper is not to be taken in the morning it is in the evening it is in the evening commemorating, starting you know, the Passover the, uh, the commemoration so, um, the, the, the it is the that commemorate the Passover that initiated that start that kickstart the Passover. Yes, let me use the word kickstart. That kickstart the Passover. It was the um it was the last supper. And then uh, where did this last supper started from? You know, when the Israelites when they were about leaving um each the book of um Exodus Exodus. chapter 12 that was where God passed over and so God told them take now let, let, let's quickly look at let, let, let's look at it from a verse um, from verse verse Lord speaks 12 from verse 1, Exodus chapter 12 from verse 1. And the Lord speak unto Moses and Aaron, saying, In the land of Egypt, saying, This morning, this month shall be the beginning of your month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, 
every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father a lamb for a house look at that on the tent on today's day this date wow wonderful so so god said that that a lamp for a house so and the house that is, let him peer up with his with his um so and then you shall your lamp shall be without blemish or a, a male of the first year you may take it from the sheep or from the goats now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month then the whole assembly of israel of the congregation kill it at the twilight that is in the evening they shall kill the lamb so which is a passover a passover day so bible said that they shall eat the flesh roast it in fire with unleavened bread can you see that with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs that shall they shall eat it do not eat it raw nor boil it at all with water but roast it in fire it's and it's entail and trails you shall let some you shall let none of it remain until morning and that and that and what remain of it until morning you shall burn with fire now this is god talking to the israelite giving them instruction how to observe the passover and um, and i told that tomorrow is passover but it starts today in the evening and it is commemorated with the um with the communion with the last supper that what we call it last supper because it was last food the israelites that evening it was the last one they had in the land of egypt before they were sent out before they were thrust out they were eating at night bible said that they should rush it let's go ahead verse 11 exodus 12 11 and thus you shall eat you shall eat it this is how you shall eat it with a belt on your waist your sandals on your feet your staff on your hand and you shall eat it in haste they will rush they will rush they will eat it rushly so in haste because it is the lord's passover pass over the land of egypt is going to walk through the entire land of egypt so when they are eating this um this um last supper they will eat it in haste the deliberative thing is not a thing you 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 you, you spent so many hours no within one hour you're supposed to finish eating it you eat it in haste in haste because god is passing over for i will pass through the land verse 12 exodus 12 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt by that night on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of egypt both male and female and beast and man now the blood shall be a sign look at that on your house on your household wear blood where i where i see the blood when i see the blood i will pass over you and that is the reason why we are taking the last supper so when you read it down you will see that they are so what now why 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 do we need to eat it with um, um in east and i told you it was because god is going to is, is passing over the land of Egypt. It was the night that Jesus, that God has determined to set the Israelites free. So it was the night that God is going to do the final, uh, is going to unleash the final assault on the on their taskmasters, on the Egyptians. 
So it, it, it was going to be a night they will never forget. Both parties, both Israelites, the Jews, and then the Egyptians, they will never forget it in their life. So God is going to pass, is going to release angel of death at night that will strike the dead every firstborn in the land of Egypt, except the house that has the blood of the lamb or of the goat at their doorpost at the entrance of the house. It was only those houses that will be speared. So if paradventure uh, just cast, you know, just um, lackadaisically for Moses has started the game. We, we, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Then he, they just live like live like that. They slept. By the time they wake up in the morning, their firstborn would have died. And if Egyptian that that was a friend that was friends to to the Israelites had had it from their um, Jewish friend and they did it in their own house, even in Cairo, and they were in in, in Goshen. The angel of of uh, death will not kill any house that bears the blood. And so the blood was to be placed on every house in the land of Goshen. Understand that as do let us um, why do, do, do we have to eat with unliving bread? What is unliving bread? Unliving bread is a bread that has no yeast. And the, 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 that is mixed. It, it was it was only mixed with oil, but not with water. So when you are eating it, when you are preparing the bread, the bread, the, the flour, the flour will be mixed with oil, not with water, because God said that they should not even roast. They should not boil with water. So it is the oil that you are going to use to mix the the flour. When the flour is mixed with or with water and with oil, you don't put um, you don't put what the what is it? You don't put um, sugar in it. You don't add um, yeast in it because all these things are they are they are man made. They are man made. They are artificial. So God doesn't want that. God does not want artificial things added to it. So he was the one that is preparing us for a greater deliverance, a night of deliverance. So I know that tonight when we take the communion, the um, by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, the angel of darkness, the angel of death that has been locking around the country will would have finished his job by the grace of God and will leave our country. So And the country will be at peace again in the name of Jesus. So, the, when you are taking the bread, you cannot just buy bread again. You cannot just buy bread from an uh, eatery, from any eatery. Mm -hmm. You cannot buy bread from your, you cannot even use, um, you cannot use um, sliced bread. No, it's not. You are watering down, you are reducing the content, you are reducing the power um, in the Last Supper. The power of God in the Last Supper. There is power of God in that communion that we are going to take this evening. So, you take it this evening. We, if you, we have the lockdown now. Nobody can go out. But in your house, you can organize it and take it. You can organize it and take it. And if there's no um, unliving bread, you can postpone it till the time we will be able to go out. So, make sure that you do it this once in a year. So it's a once in a year thing. We do it once in a year. Last Supper is once in a year. It is communion. It is only communion that you take every month, every week, every day. But Last Supper is once in a, in a, in a year. It's yearly. Because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We are doing it in remembrance. And remembrance of something comes once in a year. Your birthday comes in a year. So you do the remembrance of your birthday. You celebrated your birthday once in a year. You do the remembrance of the death of your loved ones once in a year. For the fact that you remember every day, but that doesn't mean that you celebrate it every, every day. So you celebrated it once in a year. Once in a year. last supper. Last supper is once in a year. And what is the content of this last supper? Number one, the this unliving bread is a bread 
that you 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 made we normally we normally ask the caterer to do it for us it's a bread that you bake you bake it without um without yeast without, without water you use oil to mingle it give it you bake it and then you heat it so that is unleavened bread because it's going it's not going to rise that's why we call it unleavened bread there is nothing inside it that will make it rise so the flour will not rise so we we we, we will see that when we are when they are teaching us in the evening so by the way, we will we will have it then also we have um we, we have the the wine the wine is going is it should be should be made up um fruit from the yard fruit from the so you you, you can use orange if you don't have the pomegranate or you don't have the berry the uh, blackberry uh, or you those seed but you can buy orange and then squeeze it and then use it because it is the bible call it a so ajara so it's fruit from the vine yard from the yard so we may not have access to the vine but you may have access to orange so go to the market buy orange when you buy orange you will so when you see when you buy orange you will be able to um you will be able to to use it and then eat what you want to eat so that is about that now let's go forward a little bit let's go forward a little bit then in verse, in verse 18 now as they sat look at that jesus said assuredly i say unto you one who eat with me will betray me so it was today that jesus christ told the disciples openly that today one of you will betray me one of you will um will take we will we, we, we go in partnership with my enemies and then be we will not be able to uh to go along with us in this journey so he will he will betray me he will sell me off he will it's going to be a sellout to this ministry to this is is going to so many people are going to be a sellout happening again in in the ministry now ministry is happening so many people in the ministry they they are uh, in, they, they they are they are in the ministry of selling out they are in the ministry of selling out they are selling out to the enemies they are selling out to our adversaries. They are in partnership with the of the gospel. They are in partnership with the enemies of the ministry. In partnership with the enemies of Jesus Christ Himself. In connection with Him. They are in connection with Him. So, so and I pray that God in His infinite mercy will give them a mind or a heart to change. They will change in the name of Jesus. I read, I read further in the in in the in the book I mean book of Mark chapter fourteen and they began verse nineteen and when they began to sorrow to be sorrowful and to say I is it I and another said is it I so and Jesus answered and said to them it is one 12 who deep with me in the dish so that is the the prediction now let's look at what the the looks like how the how the last supper looks like so um, then we now look because we are not going down into that deeper but want to it's going to happen today we are going to talk about the um, sorry the last supper that we be celebrated this evening so, so i open to the book of first corinthians Chapter 10, we are all familiar to this. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. 
chapter 10, 1 Corinthians 10. Let's look at from verse 16. Verse 16. The cup of blessing which we blessed, is it not blood which we break? Is it not communion of the blood of Christ? For though many are one bread and one they are partaker of the one bread. Now, this is where the mystery lies. When we take the bread, we want to administer it to people. Use the small, small one that they have um, baked. That separate small, small one. That is not one. That is not one body. We we need a bread, just a bread. Then you break it, give it. This is how it's supposed to be solemnized. This evening, get the unleavened bread, round or flat, anyhow. Take one, pray into it, then break it, give it to individual, individual in the congregation. Give it so it is one bread. One body. So when Jesus Christ was giving to his disciples, he used one bread, one body. So he was breaking it. He was breaking it. He was breaking it. So which means when we are eating it this evening, it, the bread we are going to eat must be broken. Must be broken. Must be cut. So why? I will tell you the reason. The wine we are going to drink must be taken from, from one bottle to it and you drink. Why? Because it is one blood. It is one body. Now, the secret is this. We are the members of the body of Christ. We are members of the body of Christ. And um, because we decided to use bread, and the bread he used was to, was to signify that his body represented his body. So the, the bread we are going to eat this evening represented it is the body of Jesus Christ that we are going to eat. Now, when he break it, that is, is giving us individually, that is telling us that we are many. He divided his body into different parts, into so many parts. And that was what the Bible was, what Apostle Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Chapter 10. He said, for though for though many are one bread, for though we are many, bread and one body. So we are one bread, we are one body, we are many. So when he caught it, that his stress is breaking himself, is breaking his body and giving us. So when he give me his when he give me his body, only God knows what he gives me. It might be his hand. It may be his finger, it may be his eye, it may be his, his forehead. So at the end, when the rapture takes place, he's going to assemble back. They are going to form the body of Christ. So when the trumpet sound, when the rapture takes place, everyone that is a partaker of this body of Christ, who is a member of the body of Christ, will assemble and fit in, jointly fitted, jointly fitted into him, into Christ. So we will form the body of Christ. Another person might be ear. Another person might be tongue, might be teeth, might be finger, or right finger, might be uh, throat, might be anywhere. So as we are taking it, you know, tonight we are going to take the bread all over the world, all over the world. We are going to solemnize it. We are going to have different, but when rapture takes place, everybody will now come back and fitted together to form a body. And this was what the book of um, Ezekiel 37 told us. 37 told us. The Bible said that when the man of God prophesied, he said, and I prophesied Ezekiel. Let's look at it. Don't let us read from uh, uh, offhand. Ezekiel 37. Let's look at it. I want to check your Bible if it is in your Bible as well. So Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 3.7. Is it at seven?
So, verse 7. He said, is it chapter 7, verse 7? He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I told you yesterday that we should not be speaking on our own. We should speak according to what we heard, what Christ told us, or what the Holy Spirit instructed us. So he was following instructor. Prophet uh, Ezekiel was following instruction. So he, he followed instructions. So as, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And such and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Look at that. So that is what is going to happen in the in uh, during rapture. Be rattling. There's going to be noise. There's going to be you know cracking. So some houses will crack because some people that have been buried that their part, their body had you know turned to dust or their bone had been used. To make bricks on the wall and um, they have used it to build house it will come out from that wall the one that that, that has been eaten by fish will be come out will you know, will be released so everything will be released so a complete body will complete will come to completion and that is what bible says so that is what ezekiel says so imagine when he was prophesying and then they had built house they have come there to carry some sand and then take it to another village to go and build house. And then the man of God now prophesied. And then there is um, rattling. So many houses will collapse. Many things will, will happen. With because the body in that place will be released. And will come together. So when the rapture takes place. So many events will, will happen. So many things will happen. Terrible things will happen. When rapture takes place, so if um, my great-grandfather um, was a Christian and then he died as a Christian, do you know what will happen? And they have come to the village and carried the sand to Lagos here to make the bridge. You know, you know what will happen? So when the rapture takes place, the body, the flesh in that bridge will be released. So the bridge will be perforated. The houses will be perforated. So many things will happen. So everybody, everything will come together. Then we become one. So we are coming together to form the body of Christ. We are body of Christ. Only God knows which part of the body of Christ me I am. I might be his mouth because me I talk too much. So I might be his mouth. So when 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 the trumpet sound, I won't be surprised that when I fly. To meet him, I will be fitted into his lips or into his tongue. So you will be fitted into his eyes, into his ears, into his jaw, you know, into his forehead, into his head, you know, into his shoulder, or anywhere you will be fitted. So that is the essence. So the reason why we are taking a Last Supper is to remind us that we are one body. We are one body. We are one. We belong to one body. We belong to one Christ, one Lord, one Savior. We have one. So we are not into denomination. Satan brought denominations to disintegrate the Christian. You should not allow that. Me, a CNS, I cannot wear my white garment and then enter into redeem and worship there, you know, peacefully. No, they will be looking at me as the most terrible sinner in the whole world. I cannot wear my white, you know, celestial man cannot wear his white garment and enter into deeper life and then worship comfortably. They'll be looking at him as the most terrible sinner in the world. You know, you cannot wear your, 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 you cannot go, I cannot enter into um, MFM now and then tell them I'm from CNS. And you know, we see the way they'll be running away from me. That's very terrible. Uh, Christ has not taught us that. Christ has not taught us. We, all of us this evening, and we are going to unite in faith. We will unite in faith. We will be breaking the bread. We will be drinking the wine together in the name of Christ. We come together in the name of Christ. We assemble together in the name of Christ. So the name of Jesus Christ is, is the name that united all of us. We are one body. We are one Christ. We are one Lord. We have one Lord as well. So nothing should separate us from this world. So it is one love. So we have everything together um, a, a, as a body of Christ. So this evening, we are going to unite together. And I want all the church, I want the church to pray together. In, the, in your house, there is a church. 
in my house, I have wife, I have wife, I have children. So my wife and my children, they are church. We are church. Church is not building. Church is we are two or three people gathered together. That is church. He said, there I am in their midst. So we are going to have it. We are going to celebrate it today. So in your house, celebrate it. As a Christian, celebrate it with your wife and your children. Yes, celebrate it with them. Once your children have Christ, once they accept Christ, celebrate it with them. So this is, this is not a doctrinal thing. This is not a denominational doctrinal um, statement that uh, if you have not done um, confirmation, you cannot eat it. It's not in the Bible that if you have not been uh, ordained as Aladura, you cannot eat it. It is not in the Bible. It is man-made doctrine. It is man-made doctrine. So a boy of six years old can give his life to Christ. We have had so many people that are, they, so, so many great preachers that give their life to Christ at the age of six years. And they remain in Christ till today. So we have asked so many people like that. So many. At the age of King Uzziah became king. At what age was Josiah became king? For God's sake, where did you get the doctrine? That if someone is not up to 18 years, cannot eat the communion, cannot take be a partaker of the, of the Lord's Supper. Once that person, once that boy or that girl has accepted Christ as his or her Lord, and savior then it's free to take it it's free so we should not limit we should not limit it we should not limit it so it is not all this man-made doctrine has um, made christianity to be so cumbersome and so terrible to um to to accept and it's not like that that jesus christ has not taught me and you like that we were not taught like that so Anybody can take the the is a member of the body of Christ. Once he's a he wants the person is a church. I am a church, you are a church, every one of us we are church. So we need to come together as a body of Christ and eat in our house. All my children are Christian, they have given their life to Christ. So all my children, my wife is a Christian as well. So every one of us, we are Christian. We are going to solemnize it, we are going to enjoy it, we are going to pray, we are going to our strength we are going to renew rebuild our relationship with christ you know when you take the when you take this, this um it is you are repledging your allegiance with christ you are so mr you from partaking in the grace of the body of christ we have one body, we have one Lord, we have one Christ. So we have one spirit. So don't allow anybody to separate you from being a partaker in the member of the body of Christ. You are a Christian, so go ahead, take from it. Tell your pastor you are going to partake this year. So no matter how small or how big you are, if you know by age, it is not it is not written in the scripture at what age can you take the communion it wasn't it, it wasn't written there so it is for the christians for the christian for we are for we though many we are many but we are one bread we are one body we are one bread i am the bread you are the bread so when jesus christ caught it and gave his disciples the bread did one thing as soon as they put the bread into their mouth the supernatural power melted the bread into their system. It goes into your system. It goes into your body. So, you know, it fuses into your flesh. Flesh of Christ comes in. It fuses in. When you drink, it fuses into your blood. It fuses like that. So it, it, it goes into it. It becomes it makes your body, your blood to become blood of Jesus and makes your flesh to become flesh of Jesus. So that is what Jesus Christ wanted us to do. So observe, observe Israel after the flesh, that's verse 18, are not those who eat the sacrifice partakers of the altar? Look at that. So they had that night. At the night they wanted to leave Israelites and uh, leave Egypt, in, in the, the land of Egypt. They hurt that night. As soon as they hurt, they became partaker of the altar. So you, we are all partaker of the altar. All partaker of the altar of Satan. Now let's go to First Corinthians chapter eleven. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11. I love this place so much. So I love it so much. So it's about um, how we are going to behave at that level. He said, therefore, when you, verse 20, verse 20, 1 Corinthians 11, 20, there in one place to eat the Lord's Supper for in eating each one takes his own supper ahead of others is drunk not do you not have houses to eat and drink in or do you despise them those who have nothing what shall I say to you Shall I praise you in the day? I do not praise you. That is what Paul was saying here is that when some people come to church to partake in the Lord's Supper, they put some people aside. They first of all give the influential people. They give the millionaires. You know, they give them full cup, full cup, special cup to drink. And after they drank, finish. No more wine or no more bread. So if the bread got finished, then they now give wine to everybody that remains. If the wine finished, they only serve bread to the, to the remnant. No, it's not good. It's not like that. That's a very terrible thing. That is dissension in the house of God. That is separatism. So it shouldn't be. We should not partake in separating the body of Christ. There's no one that is bigger than the other. No one is higher than the other. We are equal before him. We are all equal. We are equal before Christ. We are one body, one Lord, one baptism. So we should not treat with um, content. All of us will remember what happened in those days in Lagos here when a priest was serving um, communion and the wife of a governor came in, <laughs> you know, and she expected that in my own dignity, in my own almightiness, I should be served first. And then the man of God, not, no, um, not an eye service man, very strict, a man of God. So he just went ahead and served them according to their seat as they were seated. And the woman just, you know, was annoyed. That, whoa, 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 what sort of nonsense? He's supposed to, supposed to serve me first now. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. Man, God is not respecter of, he's not respecter of any person. So we should not do that. We should serve everybody equally as they can. Serve them the same quantity, the same size of bread, everything, the same thing. No one is bigger than the other. That small boy might be the greatest in the, in the kingdom. It might be the greatest in the kingdom. So many people, so many pastors who thought they are giants, but they are dwarf spiritually. They are spiritual dwarf. They are very, very dwarf in the spirit. While those people that you think they have nothing, they don't have money because they don't have money, you think they are dwarf in the spirit and they are spiritual giants in the spirit. There are some people that are praying for you that makes the miracles happen. If they stop praying for you, come. So you don't do that. Then, verse 23. I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. So what I am teaching you is what I receive from the Lord. I receive from the Lord and I am delivering it to you. So what I deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was to be betrayed, so tonight he will be betrayed. Tonight, after eating the Passover, Judas will leave their congregation and then go and tell them that we are coming. On that day, so what I receive what I saw, what I read, what I receive of the Lord is what I am giving you. So, at that, at, the, at that night that he was to be betrayed, and when he had given thanks, he took the bread and said, Take this, is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same man in the same way, he also took the cup after the supper and saying, This is the 
my blood, new covenant, new testimony, new testament in my blood. These do so as often as you do you drink it in remembrance of me. As long as we be more coming to assemble the blood together. He's coming to assemble the body together. He's coming to take you home. This world is not our home at all. It's not our home. It's not our home. Every day I am thirsty to go. I am hungry to go to see him. I want to meet my Lord. I want to see him. I want to know him better. I want to be with him forever and ever. So this world where there is heat, where there is coronavirus, where there is trouble, where there is no electricity, where there is no water, where there is no money, where there is uh, absence of peace, where there is war, where there is kidnapping, where there is, you know, um, suicidal mission, and all sort of things. No, I am tired. A good Christian will not be, will not find it convenient and comfortable to continue in this world. This world is not our home. Jesus Christ repeatedly telling his disciples that, look, I am going, I am Paul, Apostle Paul also repeatedly telling people that I am going, that I am going, that, that I may be like him, that I may know him, that I may understand, that I may have relationship, I may have um, rapport with him. So that is the crying of a true Christian. A true Christian will always be expectant, expecting the coming of his, of his Lord, of his Savior. You have to be expecting your Lord, your Savior, is coming. He's coming to assemble us, to take us together. So, we should be ready to do that. To welcome him. So, we, are, we, 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 we saw that. He said that. He said that, for as often as you eat the bread and drink. That's verse 26 of 1 Corinthians 12. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats the bread or drink this blood of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood and body of the Lord. So, let a man examine himself well. And so, let him not let him eat of the bread and drink of the blood. For he who eats and drink in an unworthy manner, eat and drink judgment to himself, and not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. So what he's saying is that as long as we have to examine ourselves before, you have to examine, you know yourself more than anything. You can pretend to be saint and you know you are a devil. You know you are a Satan. Satan incarnate. So me as a pastor, I might put up um, yardstick that if you have not done confirmation, if you have not become a ladra, or you have not done baptism, or you have not uh, spent up to five years in the church or in the Lord, in, the, in Christ, you cannot eat of this. Yes, yeah, you might pass through all these things. You might be 30 years in the Lord, in, in, in the church, let me use the word in the church, you might be 30 years old, older in the church, you might have, you know, claimed that you have given your life to Christ, but yet you still indulge, indulge in adultery, you still indulge in fornication, you still indulge in eating, um, in, in, a, in a, taking concussion from herbalists, you still indulge in practicing voodooism, you still indulge in indulge in practicing practicing occultism you still indulge in um, uh, witchcraft practices you still indulge in sorcery you are a sorcerer by style and you still indulge in using you know you are still fetish in, in you know in, in character then you are you are in trouble so you need to for god's sake you need to change you should not go and hit the bread when you know you are not living a life worthy life in life of christ the life of christ is not in you so you should stop you should not eat if you eat it you will fall sick 
If you eat it, you will just be leaning. You will become thin. If you eat it, you will be you you will be sleeping spiritually. Because you are a sinner. You are an adult sinner. And you pretended as if you are not a sinner. You pretended as if you are you speak in tongues more than anybody in the church. Yeah, good of you. But you are a sinner. A liar. You are a thief. You 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 get engaged in thiefery. You thief things too much. You even money, church money, you steal it. When they ask you to go and bank the money after the offering, when they collect the offering and you are to, to count it, you have stolen some. Have some in the then you go there. You are a thief. You stole the money, they gave you money to go and bank in the church, and you came back and tell them that you are robbed. You are a thief, and you are not robbed. You are a thief. So you are not take to be a part because you don't belong to the body of Christ. You are not a member of his body. You are rotten. The body of Christ cannot be rotting. The body of Christ cannot be stinking. Christ cannot be dirty. You are dirty. So you are you are not to be a partaker. You are not to be a partaker. These are the people that cannot be a partaker. Cultism. You belong to lodge. You are not part of the body of Christ. You are not a body because Jesus Christ. Do not... So you belong to a, to a cult, to any group, any or any lodge. Then you are you are not worthy to to drink this evening. You are not worthy. You belong to all these marine spirits, familiar spirits. You are not worthy. So I want to indulge you that you should examine yourself very well so that when you take, you know, each time I take this communion, this um, last supper, it increases my spiritual velocity. It increases, it increases spiritual velocity. It makes you grow. You grow. When you take, you take it. If you are a dreamer, your dream life will become so sharp and so direct. If you are a, you are a, uh, you are a prophet, your prophecy becomes so acute, so acute. If you are a man of God, you are equipped. You are you spiritually, you will be lifted. If a sinner, if if a sickler, a sickler take it. If a sickler take it, we administer it to sickler, and it liberates them. It makes them feel ease. And healed, they get healed. So there is communion called healing communion. So we can give, we give to people that are sick and they get healed. What the medical cannot do, the communion will do it. And this is beyond human understanding, it's beyond science, it's beyond laboratory. So that is the Christ. That is how powerful his blood is, how mighty are his blood and his flesh is to us encourage you this evening that as we are going to partake in the in the eating and drinking of this last supper i pray that god will be with you in the name of jesus i will come your way tomorrow again to talk about um to talk about this um good friday why is it good friday what is good in it when someone's child was killed what is good in it when the mother was watching his son being killed gruesomely gruesomely so what is good in that when the disciples watches their master being killed and they are helpless they of the day were brutalizing their masters so what would they do so i want to encourage you to stay put we, we if i were you you can stay at least tomorrow you fast. Today, if you have not eaten, just fast. Just to add essence into your life. So we hit communion. We hit last supper. Then to make us sensitive to take it so that we to remember that Christ is coming back. Someone who shed this blood we are drinking, who shed it for us on the cross of to take us home. He's reminding us that we belong to one body. He's reminding us that we belong to one Christ. He's reminding us that we belong to one blood. That we have one blood flowing. 
So he's reminding us that we are not of this world. We are um, citizens of the world. He's reminding us that everything will soon come to a close. The whole world is coming to a close. The world is running towards destruction. And pick us up to pick this world before the world eat destruction. The world is running towards destruction at very high velocity. The acceleration is double now. Towards destruction. And we are crying, we are shouting, but they won't listen. So those of us, as many that listen, Bible said as many that accept him, to them he gave the power to belong to become the child of God. And then he said that um, for God so, loved, God so loved the world that he gave us the only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. So only those who believe in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ will not perish along with the world. So the world is I am calling you out. Let us get out of this world by accepting Christ our Lord and Savior. Let us accept him as our Lord and Savior. He will pick us up. He will take us out of this world in his own way, at his own time. He knows. He is watching the world as the world is going to He's watching it. So he's coming to take us out of this world before it will be destroyed. So Some times ago, they said there is a big stone that is coming. It's going to crush the world. It's going to crush the earth. Well, I wouldn't know, but I know one thing that before anything will happen that will destroy the whole world, rapture will take place. That one I am wondering. Before Antichrist will have his way in this world, rapture will take place. Jesus will come and rapture his church away. He will take us away. Then, uh, then my brother. So I pray God will bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. If, if you are here, you are, you are watching me, you have not given your life to Christ. I just wanted to just take this simple thing. And you want to give your life to Christ. You want to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. I just want you to just stretch your hands towards me and let me pray with you. Close your eyes and say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing the word of salvation to my way. Lord, I thank you for... I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I pronounce you as my Lord and Savior. I renounce Satan and his cohorts. I renounce Satan and his handworks. I renounce Satan and his angels. I belong to Jesus today. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Take over my life. I surrender my life to you. Take over my life and from this moment and forevermore. Amen. I want to pray with you. I want to sound well. Father, in the name of Jesus. The word of God says that whosoever sins I forgive shall be forgiven. You are watching me that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven and wiped out in the name of Jesus. Go and sin no more. Your name is written in the book of life. As from this moment, Jesus, take over your life. Receive the spirit of God. Receive the spirit of Jesus. And begin to live a life above sin in the name of Jesus. You will not sin again. You will not go back in the name of Jesus. His glory will shine up jesus thank you father as your name is written in the book of life you will never go back to sin the root of sin is bro is destroyed in your life the willingness to commit sin is destroyed in your life is taking the, the passion to worship god in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name we prayed amen i welcome you into one big family the family of god the family of our lord jesus as our firstborn is the firstborn of our father is our elder brother jesus christ so you are welcome to that family one big family the family of god so keep bouncing in the freedom I come your way tomorrow she remains festus baba tunde taiwo of throne of grace model parish of cherubim and seraphim movement church ayo new number 30 mufuta adeyemi street orelope bus stop at egbeda lagos when you are coming from Iyanopaja or from um, from Idimu, from Igondo, Ikotun, or from um, Isolo, you get you enter bus going to Iyanopaja. From Iyanopaja, you enter bus going to um, either Igondo or that is going to um, Ikotun. 
Tell the driver you want to get down at Almoru filling station. Almoru filling station. So when you get down at Almoru filling station, there's a street beside Almoru filling station. That is Mufutau Adeyemi Street. Number 30, Mufutau Adeyemi Street. You will see the church, Throne of Grace Model Parish of Cherubim and Seraphim Movement Church and your new number 30 move our day Yemi street at Oreluque bus better lagos number if you want to ask me question or you want to you need counseling or you want just call this number zero eight two six zero zero four 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 zero eight zero two six zero zero four 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 zero eight zero two six zero zero four 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 so you can you can call that number and as long as you call it i pray in the name of jesus his grace will be with you in the name of jesus so i will come your way by the grace of god next week of god and we will be looking at the mystery on the cross what are the seven words of the cross and what are the things that um, that is being done uh, on the cross. Why did Jesus Christ say those words? Why? Why did he not say other thing? That. So we need to look at the essence of um, his cross. Why did he choose to mount the cross of Calvary on the cross? Die gruesomely like that. When he has power to disappear to disappear to kill those who have come to arrest him in the uh, in the garden of Gethsemane he didn't do that even when he asked people that can help him you know the Erukus the, like um, Bra Peter who cut down the air and yet he returned the hair back oh, what a matter of what a, ma a manner of man is Jesus you know he's a wonderful man so we want to see that but today after he had the last take away he will not take that supper with them again until he will drink it newly in the kingdom in his father's kingdom and that is during the time of uh, the marriage of the lamb that will take place in the air so i i am inviting you to become his wife i am a wife to jesus and by becoming a wife that means you are a member Church, you are a church as many that gives that accept him. You know, he told G, he told Peter, he said, Upon this, when Peter said that you are of the world, he told him to his face that you are that Christ, the Son of the Living God. So, once you confess that Jesus is Christ and the Son of the Living God, you are automatically added to the church, you become a member. Of the body of Christ. So, uh, what is a body of Christ? A body of Christ are those people who believe in the in, who believe in the same ideology, the same word, the same intake. Same. They are not separated. So, God bless you. I remain yours in the name of Jesus. Call that number on the screen 080-2600-4444. And God bless you. Till we meet again tomorrow don't forget make sure you take you you take communion today with you and your family though you cannot go there, stay within you and your family take the communion take it god will be with you god will be jesus will be in our midst in jesus name god bless you thank you